We're talking about all things COVID today because it's what a lot of people are talking about right now. In this segment, we want to take some time to talk about COVID and the fact that it is airborne, which of course we have known from the beginning, uh, because that has a lot to do with transmission and with kids heading back to school. Once again, here in North Texas, it is important information for parents to consider as well. So we want to bring in Dr. Kimberly Prather. She is the director at the National Science Foundation's Center for Aerosol Impacts on chemistry of the environment, which is also part of the University of California, San Diego. Mouthful there, Dr. Prather, but wanted to get all of that in there uh, because <laughs> it is all important. Uh, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Yeah, thank you for having me and thank you for covering this really important topic. Absolutely. You know, I, I get the sense that we all need to sort of be re-educated about COVID again because we've had a, a couple of these lulls where it looked like we were out of the woods and we could rip off those masks and sort of forget about it again. And then it can, comes roaring back and it really is doing a number across the country right now. From the very beginning, uh, we've been talking about this being an airborne virus. We've heard so much about that, uh, as well as viruses that are spread by large droplets. Can you mm -hmm. explain the difference between those? Uh, yeah, so I mean, some, there's been so much confusion over how this virus spreads. Um, and, uh, you know, early on, we were told wipe surfaces, you know, mm -hmm. keep the surfaces clean. And that's because like historically for a hundred years or so, the medical community has thought that most of these viruses are spread in droplets. So when we cough or sneeze, we produce this spray and that largely falls within six feet. So that's sort of the origin of that. But this virus um, is not being produced as much by people who have symptoms. They're just talking and breathing. And so one of the things we've come to learn is that not only do you produce droplets, you produce far more aerosols and aerosols are like smoke. They come out of your, out of your breath, in your breath, and they just float and linger in the air. They don't fall in six feet. So they, you know, they've created uh, havoc, shall we say. Um, and so there are many of us that have been fighting for two years to say it's in the aerosols, it's in the stuff that builds up indoors and we need to protect ourselves. And I'm a firm believer, had we done that, like, some countries have, mm -hmm. we would have not been in this position. And I, so it's been a rather, to be honest with you, frustrating time for I, many of us. I wonder about Omicron too. Is it is it so much more transmissible because, you know, once it gets in, it does its work more efficiently and effectively, or is it better at being turned into an aerosol and sort of hanging in the air with us? Do we know that yet? You are, you are on top of this. So yeah, so it's both. I think the answer is right now, what we think, we don't know, we'll find out, but Right now, I think it's probably both. Um, it's in the air. There is some belief that it takes a lot less to get infected, as you say, like it's just more efficient. And so the bottom line is though, it's in the air. You know, Omicron, it took Omicron to wake up the world to airborne. Um, and, you know, but the thing that I've been saying since day one is once we acknowledge it's in the air, it's fixable. It's not a scary situation. You just you know, there's ways to fix it in this pandemic. Um, so, uh, and I think I was uh, hearing you correctly earlier when you're talking about mitigation strategies and washing hands is great, being clean and, you know, hygienic and so forth. And we've got hand sanitizer everywhere, but really that's not doing anything to the air around us. And I think a lot of people are thinking more about that air right now because we're in the winter months and now we've got kids here in North Texas anyway, returning from winter break where maybe they've been traveling and being around relatives they hadn't been around. Uh, and, and now they're gonna be in those confined spaces once again. Yeah, I mean, high risk activities are indoor, poorly ventilated, um, where we're sharing the air. And that's where we are right now. And I can't tell you how frustrating it is to see people walk into public places and there's bottles, you see them, bottles of hand sanitizer, wash your hands and they're not wearing masks, hmm. right? And so it's just, it makes you a bit crazy because it's it shouldn't be this hard. And so I hope, yeah, through like shows like yours that we can educate the public on how to protect themselves. Do you get the sense though, that we have uh, had somewhat of a learning curve and have learned some lessons in some cases? I mean, we are seeing the Grammys now 
uh, being pushed back uh, this year because of the, the Omicron variant specifically. They just think it's too much of an, a, a danger right now. That would have been an indoor ceremony. Uh, we haven't seen the Super Bowl pushed back or canceled. That is expected to be an outdoor uh, game. Is, is that what we're seeing there? Or, or would you say even outdoor events need to start, you know, maybe taking things a little more seriously? Okay, so I think indoor is is a risk, obviously high risk. Um, and uh, you know, I personally, we can get into mitigation strategies, and I'll happy to talk to you. There's solutions for that. Mm -hmm. Outdoor, we don't know, um, is what I will say. It, like up until now, outdoor has been a lot safer. They say you're more likely to be infected indoors. It's like 20 times more likely. Mm -hmm. But there are now incidents. I know people personally that swear they were they've worn masks indoors all the time. But this this virus just seems like it is it is we know it's more infectious. And so outdoors we're we have to look at that a little more closely. 